Our home is a story of ecology and art. This is not about sacrifice or deprivation. This is about living joyfully and living with a sense of courage. I am Kara Judea al Khadef, and I'm a former university professor, critical philosophy, and Wild is a former wildlife ecologist, conservation biologist. And we both left our professional worlds to come together to live as much as we can with integrity, uh, living our ecological ethics. I think one of the turning points for us was when we were looking at a variety of ways that we could build a, a healthy home, a sturdy home, an economical home, but also a home that was going to be taking trash and turning it into something gorgeous and livable. Mm -hmm. When you first walk into the bus, you see the driver's seat, the regular steps up, the, even the, the great moving door that opens up. I, always, I wanted to leave that part of it. it. Kids that visit think it's so fun to come and check out the bus door. But once you s start walking into it, it looks like somebody's home. It looks like a cabin. For our family, it's, re it's been really important to wake up every day feeling connected to our environment, but also knowing that we're doing everything uh, that's, that we can to uh, repurpose, reuse, and w drastically reduce our negative impact on the world. Zazu, our son, and Wild and I began to build our bus, our love bus, in 2017 as a response to climate chaos and affordable housing. Um, we built the whole thing for under $5,000, including the bus itself and all of the repurposed objects. And we plan on living in it really until the end of our, our days. And Zazu also has his bus, the Zas, that we built a few years later, um, also as a, as a response to climate crisis and how to fold in beauty and storytelling into our daily lives. Daily, what I find is a deep connection to where everything is coming from, from uh, uh, filling up the coffee pot in the morning to make coffee from the cistern that we collected rainwater, or taking out the solar lamps to charge during the day so we could use them at night, to bringing in firewood to help keep us warm, or going to the bathroom outside. Uh, it really helps to understand where our connection is to the rest of the world. It's about really understanding where these objects in our lives come from um, because everything is repurposed, um, everything from the insulation to um, every part of the solar energy system that we have, the solar panels, batteries, uh, controllers, etc. Everything is reused. Um, down to the last screw. So that sense of intimacy with the objects in our home and letting that be an educational experience and a political commitment. One of the things that people can do to start um, an alternative kind of lifestyle is looking at the way that they live and mm -hmm. the things that they buy and where does the building materials come from, who's impacted by those by those uh, materials being taken from the wild, but then also uh, how can we find materials that are not necessarily uh, first generation use? When we're committed to that daily awareness, then we're more connected to the people who, who mined the materials, who mined the, the materials for the solar panels, or who mined the materials for um, for the bus itself. And it's not, we're not taking these objects for granted. 
we're actually in relation to those people and trying to create a little less harm through a sense of joy. Our life choices are rooted in transforming what is seen as waste, what is deemed disposable, what is seen as, as superfluous, and transforming it into beauty and a collective practice to fight against climate chaos, to work intergenerationally with our community for a sense of climate resiliency to build together in our daily practices. We traded with an artist that, uh, that painted the outside of it. So we have these big, beautiful flowers and, and animals on the outside. So it is, it's, as Cara calls it, an eco-art bus, uh, the love buses. The bus is just one of many, many examples of creative, affordable living, where public art and ethics and ecology are all wrapped together. Our, our home really feels like it's a, it's a process of creative relationships. And it's connected to our community rather than just a disassociated set of objects sort of stacked on each other. It's kind of a web of, again, of intimacies and a web of relationality. We have to live with ourselves. And how can we live with ourselves in a way where there is a sense of kindness and there is a sense of profound responsibility. Not, again, not out of guilt, not out of fear, but that it actually creates joy. The idea of taking a creative collective risk in our home making process and doing something different, doing something unusual, something that we weren't Todd is even an option. I understood more and more that there was so much work to be done, that the only way to heal ethnic and racial divisions and the ecology of our global body is to see how we are all interconnected. We all have to take care of each other.